Okay, boys and girls, welcome back to the stream. It's your host, Marley Startled, and today we're going to hopefully finalise the Soviet meta, at least to make it a workable meta for multiplayer games. I have lost two of my Soviet Union campaigns so far, because I've been trying to bring the old rules of the old deal, um, game to the, this, new, uh, this new DLC, and it doesn't work. But uh, I was able to win offline using a new sort of idea and changing it around for the Soviet Union. So fingers crossed, I can show it to you guys as well, and hopefully this can be viable for you guys if you are willing to go to a multiplayer game. So of course we're going to play the Soviet Union and we're going to talk a little about the supply system so you guys sort of understand what is going on. So the supply system works is as follows. Supply hubs are basically your land ports. These dish out supply. The amount of supply dish out, they dish out, it's not based on the supply hub's level because there's only one level, but the levels of the railroad connecting it. And the railroads go from the capital, Moscow, where the supply is made, to the supply hubs. So, if we take a look at this supply hub here, this is Moscow, this is the capital, and the supply will move along this rail line down to Leningrad, or the supply hub at Leningrad. This will mean that if there's a supply bottleneck, if these railroads are not high enough, the supply level in the supply hubs will be limited by a certain level, limiting the amount of men you can have on it. You can increase the supply distance of these by going double motorised and for the most part because that supply trucks are pretty easy and quick to make you can make most of your sectors um, supply uh, motorised especially by 1941. So let's first get all our troops together and let's demonstrate the supply problems. So this is what I like to do to work out my supply systems for the game I'm about to have. So I get all my guys together, all 100 divisions, if I'm playing an historical game. I bring them all together, and then I put them on the Stalin line, because this will be important later. So here's the Stalin line, it's this river going all the way around, past Kiev, over here. Oh yeah, over here. And I'll put them up here as well, because we're going to need some decent supply in this sector as well. And I send them all over here. We don't have to worry about organising it too much yet, but this is what we need to do first. Next, I'm going to go down the path of Marxist Leninism, just to save me some time and hassle. And I'm going to do some pre-development. Because you can see here, that the supply levels are very low. So if I click on my unit, and then click on the infrastructure, I'll see where the bottleneck is he says. There's the bottleneck. So the supply is going to this hub here, but it's been bottlenecked by this railroad. So what we're going to need to do is we're going to need to upgrade this railroad to that level. And then we're going to need to upgrade this railroad to that level. And then finally, this railroad to that level. So level three should be about enough to keep these guys supplied and they'll start doing their thing. Equally, down south, there's not any nearby supply areas. Uh, this is a supply hub here, but if we're going to do the Stalin line and try and hold this sector, you can see a little trick going on. The supply, the railroad, is going along this route to the supply hub. So once the Germans take this, most of this will be really undersupplied, which you don't want to have. So what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to build a supply hub here. Uh, let's build it here. And then you want to connect that railroad to there. Actually, no, we're going to cancel that. We're actually going to build it on the railroad. This is saves P, uh, PP. We're going to build it on this railroad here. And then we're going to connect it to there. I'm going to upgrade that to level 3. Upgrade that to level 3. And upgrade that to level 3. Level 3 should be enough for us to maintain most of our supplies in the south. Now, you can see already here why there's such a limiting factor for the Soviets because you're going to waste a lot of your early game building up your supply lines. So this means that, for the most part, when you get to 1941, you will actually be weaker than the Germans in industrially, which is really bad. But your strength will be the supply damage they have to take pushing into you. So that will mean that as they push in, they're going to have to use a lot of their infrastructure or, or industry to fix the railroads and get that supply going, whereas you won't. And so you're using the supply line to even the playing field, which is going to be very difficult. However, you need to protect your own supply lines from 
logistics bombing, which I suspect in multiplayer is going to be a big thing. Logistics bombing and uh, is going to be a nightmare. Also, right now, supply transports are bugged and they will supply everything, like millions of men with just a handful of transports. So until multiplayer lobbies fix that, you are going to end up with a lot of cheese going on with rail. So that means that as the Soviets, you're going to have to focus on air and especially land lease to stop that from happening and the bombing of logistics. And then by 1942, switching that air out to military production, to tank production. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to research the lag three. Actually, we're not. We're going to research construction. The second thing we're going to do is research that fellow. And the third, we're going to research tanks. So let us research. Uh, we're going to go with light tanks this time. Medium tanks work as well, but we're just going to go for light tanks. Our military production. We're going to have one guy on civilian trains, pumping out about three factories. A couple of motorized, that'll be enough for the entire game. Uh, we're going to get rid of strategic bombers, we don't need them. And then the rest we're going to put into AA as well, so we're going to have some AA. Because really, the early game of the, of the Soviets will be a roach build. You're going to be doing a lot of roaching early on, which is uh, unfortunate but necessary. And then our, we're going to put a load on this as well because our supply, our support equipment is going to be extremely necessary as well. Okay. Then we're going to buy rubber. And we are going to chill. So what do I mean how the meta's changed? Primarily tanks are ridiculously expensive to make now. And for the Soviets, you will not be able to field enough men to hold your fronts and make enough tanks to be viable this early on in the game. If I, up here, you can do mobilization priority to triple motorized uh you can click here to re to assign air wings and things like that but uh for that you can just do this and this will automatically change everything to double motorized for us so the meta's changed significantly before you could make loads of tanks to be on par of the germans you can no longer do this because uh, you will not have enough industry instead you will be forced to use the supplies and uh, infrastructure and the uh, attrition from the new logistics system to wear the germans down Instead, your new focus should be to get about 300 infantry divisions. Get 300 of those bad boys out. Let's get these tanks out. And let's get these uh, guys out. You want at least 100 infantry divisions. Pretty good ones as well. Well, 300 to hold a line once you get pushed back. From there, you are going to focus mainly doctrine-wise. On the roach build. So the good thing about this new system is that it does allow you to change your doctrines based on XP before you were sort of soft locked by your technology time limit. So in the previous uh, game mode, I would go down here, or I'd go down say one of like Blitzkrieg, and then I wouldn't be able to switch because of the time it'd take me to switch to a new doctrine. But now at the Soviets, I can go down here during the roach stage, 1941 to the end of 1942, and then switch to deep battle and start going down here once I get my tanks production going. That means that it gives you a lot of leeway and it means that the actual meta, the game play is, is, has changed as the uh, Mosque, as, as, as the Soviet Union. You can no longer just be full on tank build from the start. You are now forced to um, adapt basically. You have to start off as an infantry roach build, move air pre preferably because you can't rely on most multiplayer games, the Allies land leaving you enough air. Uh, and from there, once it gets to the end of 1942, switching to tank reduction and getting the ball rolling. So we're going to start moving the troops there, and then we're going to be chilling from now on. So we've got political paranoia. Well, actually, we don't yet, but we will soon. And the next thing we're going to do is... Where's the Agropom? Well, we'll go down the centre left now. And then we'll do the Agropom. The Agropom is also an extremely powerful focus. So if I show it to you here, the Agropom will give you, for PP, will give you certain bonuses to production uh, and consumer goods, but it will also give you exceptional PP, um, bonuses to defense. And this will mean that you will be able to defend yourselves against the Russian or uh, the German onslaught by buffing those stats. Because at the start of the game, you can have massive penalties for the Red, for the red Army. You see, that's a penalty. Um, Army experience gain, that's a penalty. Army organization, that's a penalty. Yeah, you're going to lose a lot of troops. However, when you eventually get to, bah, 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 say, the adaptable army, and then eventually, once you survive to the end of 1942, this and this, you will start getting massive bonuses to your army, uh, to raiding, to um, 
rebels and that's when you become powerful. The first phase of the game is the survival. Your job is to survive till 1942 and then after surviving past 1942 switching to uh, switching to uh, up, well going on the offensive using those bonuses using the bonuses over winter because and using the offensive bonuses that the order 225 uh, gives you to just begin mass assaulting and wearing your enemy down. So we've got enough PP, uh, for that industrial concern. We can do that now if we wanted. But actually, we can't. That, so that's a lie. That needs to be fixed. But there is a big bug right now of air transport. So if you're going to a multiplayer game, the Soviets, and thinking it's going to be a fair game and you can go nowhere, that's not going to happen until most lobbies start banning the use of air transports for air supply. Because air supply is OP and it completely ignores the logistics system. Uh, so you can't go nowhere, Russia because um, you will be out of supply and the enemy won't in, in as simple terms as possible. So we've got the beginning rise of, uh, of propaganda, so let's expand Agropom. That will take 35 days. And once that's done, we'll go elsewhere. Actually, let's start merging our air as well. So why are we doing the Stalin line while we do this on 4-speed? Otherwise, I'm going to run out of things to say. Well, we're doing the Stalin line because with the new logistics system, if you try and defend the, the, the German border, well, what's soon to be the German border, the Germans will have max supply, they'll have air superiority, and you won't. And they will just roll through you and encircle you. So what we're going to do is we're going to blow these lines up and wear the Germans down. And then once they get over here, they won't have enough airports to maintain a decent air supply, well, to maintain that air superiority. So that is why we're, you withdraw to the Stalin line. If you don't withdraw to the Stalin line, you'll just get steamrolled, you'll lose millions of men, and then you won't be able to hold your lines. It's also very important that you hold Moscow, because that is your railway hub. If you lose Moscow before 1942, or really at any time, I would say that's almost a GG, because um, you will not be able to come back from it. So now I'm going to go down the Stalin constitution. Because that will get rid of some political paranoia. And then another thing we'll be going down once we get enough uh, divs is to finish the five year plan and all that jazz. Another thing I recommend to go down is to start rushing down development of Tanko Grad once, you've, once you're free to do it. Because if you do this, you get a, a chunk of military factories for every uh, sieve you've built in, um, or every 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 developed part of yours, and the road of life. Because the road of life will give you negative attrition, well, pos uh, less attrition, more supply, and greater supply range for for basically two years for most of the war. So if you get this bad boy, you will be really quids in in terms of supply and you will just be able to have more men on the field than the enemy does with the supply lines you currently have. And also a really important one is um, bu, 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 bu. where is it? Move industry to Urals. Do this before the start of the war. You need to do this before the start of the war because then you need to move all your industry out of the Soviet, out of, of this area, so the Germans don't get anything because you desperately need it. So we'll get rid of this because I don't need it. Um, we're not going to do. We're not going to do um, navy. As we wait for the uh, Spanish Civil War, Spanish Civil War is almost unwinnable at this, uh, in this current uh, current part of the game because the. Uh, Republican Spanish just get rolled over. So immediately, send volunteers. Seven divisions or six divisions. You know, send these six divisions. Uh, here you go. Uh, it can be anyone. I'm not fast. Send volunteers. Don't forget to send air volunteers as well because you can actually do this now. And then also send attaché once you can. So we can send our volunteers. Let's get our fighters, split them up, 
Uh, actually, let's merge all our fighters. We get about 100 fighters. Bop, 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 bop. Blend them in. Split them up. There we are. And that should be enough to bring in. Oh, no. Okay, a bit more. There we are. So our fighters are going to go in because we're going to use the Air XB for an Air Rusher. Or oh, initial 1941 to 42 Air Rusher. Bop, 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 bop. There we are. Start fighting. We've done the Stalin Constitution. While we wait for that, let us go down to Heavy Industry. Maybe, uh, okay, we don't need to do this yet, we're fine. War Economy? No, we can't do that yet either. Also, good idea to rush War Economy if possible. So we've got our infantry. Again, you won't be able to win this because the AI just gets clapped, but uh, hey-ho. Make sure these guys are fully, uh, getting fully supplied. Strategically redeploy them down over here. Uh, what else to spend it on then? Oh, have we got Agripom yet? We have. There we go. So let's do transports to reduce to speed up our construction. And let's start attacking. Let's take half of those. If we can attack on this sector as well. See, I'm not spending anything on this yet. It's because uh, I want you get more from volunteers and att attaches, which is a very important point I almost forgot to do. So we're going to send an attaché to this fellow. Maybe split our air. Come on, send my attaché. Not yet. That's all right, we got time. We got time. There we are, sent our attaché. And we'll start revving up our military XP game because we're going to need that later. Now, a lot of people are still under the impression that of the previous supply line, if you have not enough supply, you will take massive penalties. In fact, supplies are in fact stored by each unit, meaning that. Um, It'll take a while before you start getting massive penalties, so you can fight in unsupplied areas. Uh, the only difference is with tanks, if, you, if the fuel will just, lack of fuel will just absolutely gimp you, and you won't be able to do much. So, we're probably not going to push, but um, it's fine. It's just dead, we're just dead to get to, you know, farm XP. Okay, how is our propaganda? Okay, let's go over here. Reduce our paranoia. Got our radio. Next thing I'm going to do is research our interwar artillery. Now you probably should be hard researching air if you are going to be doing this build, but um, I'm allowed some leniency for uh, multiple well, because it's single player and the AI won't be as good. Okay, done our focus tree, that should hopefully, let's force some statue reports, there we go, that'll keep them happy. Go back over here and try and focus on other things. You can see that one supply dump is really screwing us up. Okay, we can attack now. Let's force attack. And now we're starting to run out of supply. It's 0% stored, so we're going to start taking damage. And that's the thing with the supply line now. Yeah. 
infrastructure efforts done. Let's boom back over here. Terrace center. Oh, the offensive, because we're not going to get anywhere. And in fact, that's, I'd pull my guys out if, if I thought it was going to work, but uh, I don't think it's going to stop the lack of supply. Yeah, we're going to get pushed out because of the supply. Unfortunately, there's not much we can do unless we go around the other way. So if we start redeploying over in this sector instead. Of course, they're going to be strategically redeploying via the railroads. First Moscow trial, we actually get rid of our power noise some more. Now we can focus on other things, but we're actually going to keep on going to go down this route just to get war economy because we're going to need it. So it's now December. Hopefully our row lines will be eventually improving. Let's take a look at our armies. Is most of our supply sorted now? For the most part, yes. So we are immediately going to stop production on any more of our row lines. And then it's just a case of sieve spam. So where am I spamming sieves? As far away from the Western Front as possible because you are going to be pushed hard and you want to be as far away from that sector as much as possible. I'm also going to put some stuff in the Urals. So I'm going to put like one sieve in the Urals here, one sieve in the Urals there. Uh, where else? That's, a, that's as much as I can do. That's so I can use that tanker grad bonus. And then we're going to put everything else over here. Okay, hey, where were we? Oh yeah, we're trying to win the war, aren't we? It's not going to work, but you never know. I might get lucky. And you can see, because I've upgraded my row rows, if I actually select my army. So let's take a look at this bad boy. Go to my infrastructure. They're getting supply from this region here. Still not the best, but... From a level 3 perspective, it's it's not that bad. I mean, I'm getting a little lack of supply, but not enough to be a, to be a problem. I'm no longer getting that supply warning. And that is how you fix supply. There you go. Rule 101, how to fix supply. We've got air superiority, so I don't understand why it's taking so long to move through these mountains. Oh, I do. I know why. It's because it's mountains. As soon as these guys are done, we're going in for an encirclement. Force attack. January 1937, already we're back on the Civ game, which is extremely important to do. Um, can I switch to mill? Yeah, I'm going to go war economy now, even though I may take a penalty for it, simply because you need it as soon as possible. You cannot afford to wait with that war economy, because you can see now I'm starting to actually get some decent civ numbers. So we've got into war artillery. We're going to go here now for the improved medium howitzer and this general artillery improvements. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to start researching air. I suspect you could rush air if you were going to go down, say, this and maybe potentially get some sort of air bonus. But it's probably not likely. You've just got, you haven't got enough time to do it, if you know what I mean.
Okay, construction. Um... And upgrade this to level 5, why not? But we are doing cheap as chip, like cheap and cheerful tanks. You know, we are doing the bare minimum. Next, the collectivization process. Why are we doing this? So we don't get a penalty for mobilizing too quickly. Use this for the higher yield. Probably you should be microing spamming this constantly, but uh, I'm not, so there you go. Let's split our air wing and send some down over here. Mm -hmm, Take it down. Take the supply hub, attack here, and attack here. That should starve them a little bit. Yeah, because there's a supply hub in this sector. We take this, hopefully it's, uh, it'll allow us to keep off, keep on feeding ourselves. There we are. Taken and we pinned. They'll try counter-attacking, but they shouldn't be able to do much without that supply hub. Because now they have to get their supply hub. Well, there's no supply here, so they're just going to be starving away and I'll be fine. I said we'll aim for Seville next. Keep an eye on the paranoia. Let's make sure we keep it nice and low. We're going to take the paranoia hit on this because I don't want construction damage. And it may mean we will get a coup later on. Because that boat one damages your construction speed and that it damages it for a year, so you can't really afford to do that. No really, the only reason we're fighting this is to get that gold reserve. Of course, we've been cut off because the uh, AI is pants on head. So we can't go down. Oh. This area anymore. So we're going to see if we can go down there. We can't go down here, so there's no point doing that. Instead, let us go down. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Collectivist propaganda. Let's do collector. I know this gets rid of the tank guy, probably not meta, but for this case, um, it gives us a bonus stability, and I'd rather have that than the alternative. Okay, basic armor's done. Let us now go down logistics. We still cannot do anything because of uh, the cut to our supply line, so we're going to start going back up here. Desperate defense. I'm going to counter attack there with an assault.
maybe even going around this way. Oh, we can't. So they cut off our row lines. And now we just have to push through here and hope we get to the other side. Keep an eye on this. Let's make sure it stays at a healthy level. Probably around that first notch is built, still workable, but otherwise you can have a bad time. I'm gonna start counter-attacking, see if we can break through. And that's the only reason why we're doing this, just to get the gold reserves. Let's start putting this air over... Oh, we can't do that. We'll take this so we can hard research our tanks and then we'll do um, anti-Soviet treaty. So now we can hard research this tank, so we're going to go off, like so. Do a research switch and then research the light tank, which will be done in 419 days. And we have another place where we can send air. So if we send volunteers to this guy, can we send volunteers to any of these guys? I can send volunteers to Japan. I'm going to send volunteers to Japan. Why? Oh, it wouldn't let me. Let me improve your relations. Well, we'll improve we'll, set, we'll improve relations with nationalist China. Just about managed to cut this off and potentially save this entire war. Relations have improved, yes, yes. And attache, nope. There we are, send attache. And then let's try and improve relations with these guys. See if we can send air volunteers their way as well. So we've done somewhat, this is probably the longest I've ever had these guys survive. If I'm honest. Uh, our next supply line, we we'll try and punch through here. Yeah, that's good. Um, next, 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 next. Can't do this yet. That's very important we get this done. Uh, let us start going down, found a PCDI. Okay, have I improved sufficient relations with you, Japan? Do you want to be my friend? This would not work in multiplayer because... Well, actually it might. They may be willing to help you. Uh... No, I don't think so. Come on, what about Communist China? Are you sure you don't want me to send volunteers to you? I support you. I... Never mind. It looks like our air farming will have to be relegated to this area. I won't be able to push on these mountains, but I will be able to potentially push here. Now they retreated back. That was clever of them. And a PCDI. Do the workers' dictatorship. Once we get down to um, war economy, we'll be good. Let 
Let's do this. I know it's going to be garbage, but uh, there's not much we can do about it. Let's relocate around the other side. Oh, because they've taken that railway. Let's see if we can then um, attack here. Unlikely because they've got they've got tanks, so it's not going to work. But let's try and move around. As we just try and do the last gasp of defense, last gasp of defense before it all collapses in itself. Wish it will. Badly. So we can see our industry is now sort of popping off. We've almost got to the level we need to do um, the five year plan, which will be very important for us. I'm doing the best I can to attack this sector, but uh, not working out too well. Done our logistics companies, that's good. Uh, let's start researching infantry equipment. Get a supply back up. Counter attack. That doesn't work. Attack this instead. Work as dictatorship. Centralization and discipline. And the war's over. To be expected, but um, yeah, you can't really do much now against. Uh, really, you're just there to get that, that gold from the Spanish, and once you've got that, you're uh, you're golden. But we've got a nice, healthy amount of air supply, which we'll be using to upgrade our planes and then eventually our doctrine. See, I'm still not wasting any of my points on any of this yet because I'm going to build my tank first. Once I've built my tank with the research. I will uh, do other things. Finally, war economy. We'll take, we will take a 10% stability hit, but uh, it is what it is. And then we will we'll go down to this one here once that's done. We're going to use satisfactory reports again. That should hopefully keep Stalin, Stalin happy. Keep your Stalin boy happy. We do popular figurehead. Uh, upgrade our stability because more stability, of course, means more stuff. High yield. Once again, we're stacking those high that high yield. They're actually almost uh, in a good spot. And then we're going to keep on building up wherever, <laughs> however far as possible from the front line. Because you may potentially get pushed all, all the way back here early. Um, it, is, it, it is that bad. So you have to bear that in mind. Yeah, we'll join the non-intervention committee. Why not? I don't think it does anything. And for the most part, the rest of the, uh, of, of the DLC will effectively just be more or less doing the same civ industry as... Um, as you do in a normal game. Again, if you really want to optimize, you can delete all of these. You won't need them. And you can make trains. Three is normally enough. Any more is a bit of a waste. You can do one, but I'm guessing for multiplayer, it's a bit dangerous. So we've got 196 XP. That's really good for military XP. We can start building up our units. I'm not going to bother doing it yet, um, but I am going to make sure all of these get converted to Strilska. We've got our war economy. 
We can now go down a military conspiracy. And then we can completely ignore that entire like that entire focus now, and then we can go elsewhere. We can't afford that for the map because that will destroy our construction. I'm going to start researching anti-air. And we are getting to the dangerous levels which we can't afford. However, we don't need a lot of PP now, so we're good in that, in that regard. Potentially, this will reduce, uh, or this will remove... Oh god, political power increases by 30. At least that's gone down by 25. And then once that's gone, this will eventually remove the purge. Yeah, we eventually lose the political propaganda. So while we wait for that, we can start going down the five-year plan. So what the Soviets have is, although they lack in an industry, they get some hefty buffs to uh, military production and things like that. So military construction plus 10%, um, buy down here, optimize production lines, uh, plus 5% of growth, five, pl uh, plus 5% base, plus 2% factory output. Uh, some really quite nice buffs. So once the war starts and you can get to that third five-year plan, you can actually make a lot of guns uh, very quickly. Alternatively, if you want to go to Civ Focus, you can go down this way, which uh, increases, which reduces consumer goods. However, I would not recommend it because you would be needing to desperately militarize for this, the upcoming war. Are you any good? Reckless and Infantrosser. Yeah, we'll get the view. So once we've researched our fighter twos, we're going to start mass produce. Uh, we're going to upgrade them, and then we're going to start mass producing them. Because this is where the dynamic changes. Before, you were just going to mass tanks, but you can no longer do that because of the supply system. You now need to mass air and mass infantry, and then move to tanks afterwards. And potentially you could be getting land leased by the Americans, so. And so you can see here we're starting to run out of places to build. So we're going to start building ever closer to the danger, to the danger zone. That's when we're going to use concentrated industry and that will sort things out. So once we get our new research lot, once this goes, we can start putting this into construction again. So where's our limiting supply factor? It's here, but it's only one point, so I couldn't care less. Finish the five-year plan. See if we can go over here yet. Nope, still needs a load of days first. So we're going to start going down national specialists, so you get less consumer goods. As opposed to this, because this gives you a, a bonus and you haven't got... Uh, this gives you a advisor, and let's be honest, the advisor probably going to get shot. I'm going to take this for a year just to reduce. It's bad, but I've got to. And plus, you can see our XP is going up massively more than it would be if we were training or using um, theorists. So volunteers and attaches are still the, uh, the rule of the day. Now to save our PP up. We could inspect the army just to reduce paranoia a bit. And it does nothing. So there you go, that didn't work. Develop the rules. Yeah, we can do that. And this is the fellow we need. It's that bad boy.
I'd also say that the shift from sieves to mills is much is a lot later. Normally at the start of 39, you start switching to those to that mill production. Now with the way you're sort of gimped now, you've got to switch to mill production later if you're going to actually survive. I can't take the construction speed penalty. I'm just gonna have to take paranoia. There they are, don't have yours. Our light tank chassis is done, so we're going to start switching to this. And we're going to go over here. Still going to take us some time, so we're going to go back over to this one and do Eastern Development instead. Anti-air upgrade, which is nice. Uh, we're going to do Artillery 2 now. Because we've done with our tank tree. The reason why I'm not going so hard into tanks, because tanks are so expensive now, actually cheap garbage is better than actual, you know, decent tanks. So let me show you. You go to this bad boy. And now, if we want to build the best tank we have available, let's do, say, improved small cannon. Let's go with a three-man turret. Let's go with... Heavy machine gun, let's go with a radio. Um, sweat, st sweat storage. Smoke launchers. Um, go for gasoline for the speed. Uh, go for the best armor. And go for the best track. Best tracks. That's going to cost 18 production. And then if we start adding armor on top of it, it's only going to be even worse. And so you don't actually want very good tanks. You want sort of garbage tanks because of how um, how expensive they are. So let's go with speed instead. We'll keep the soft attack as it is with this. I mean, we could go, but I want the soft attack and the breakthrough. So that's really, that's why we're going to keep it like that. And then for our special features... Our special modules, we can add an additional machine gun for more soft attack, more defense, that's generally more everything but at a higher supply cost. Sloped armor for even more expensive supply cost. Extra ammunition stores, which we're going to take because it's cheaper. And this is probably going to be our gold standard. We can upgrade our speed, but pain is pretty good. Our armor's not bad, that 16 is sort of the golden area. Because you can make wonderful Wonder Wolf tanks with great breakthrough, but you won't be able to build 30 whips till, uh, well, till the end of the war. So really, this is just going to go in our back pocket to be used at a later date. We'll probably put one factory on it just to be on the safe side. Uh, improved chassis. So one one on this foot to keep that going. Um, we'll keep this for now, and then the rest is going to go on. I want about thirty guns. I want this full. I want this full. I want my towed artillery full, and then everything else is going straight into this objective. We're going to make air out the arse. So once it gets to um, the start of 1939, I'll just show you the uh, disparity in industry compared to the Germans. Go back over here. Let's do the block of right so I no longer have to worry about coups. And then we can switch back to research. Thank God you get that random achievement to get rid of Navy, because who cares about Navy? And now we can also build our tank templates. So our tank templates, we're going to have Logistics Company, Anti-Air, 
Motorized recon. Engineers. Support artillery. Light tanks, about that much. Going to cost between 2,000 to 6,000 supply. Going to be 20 whip. Armor's not going to be very good. So if we build another tank. And remove this. Our armor's still not going to be very good. So if I remove you. That's still pretty good. If I keep you, we'll keep that. If I remove you, that'll be 23. And if I remove you, that'll be 24. And plus, if we are going to go for an air. 23 is fine. You're going to take a lot of tank damage from this because they will be able to pierce. But um, there's not much you can do about it. And this will be our new tank template. And so what the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get rid of all these tanks. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we're going to convert them to infantry. And we're going to put them all in here. And then these tanks we're going to keep around. And then for our infantry divisions, I'm going to go with 20 whips. With port anti-air. Entrenching companies. And no logistics because we don't need it yet. And then we're going to wait. We're getting dangerously close to a, a big coup, but hopefully by this time round we won't have it. There we are, we got saved. Saved by the bell, we're good. And now we can chill. Japan's not doing too bad a job, bear in mind that the supply in Japan is now disgusting. It is really is an awful war. And you're going to have to spend years upgrading and, and supplying and resupplying. It's just going to be an awful experience now that any for any uh, Japanese players in the multiplayer. Um, it'll be very difficult for you. So my condolences. But at least the Soviets are really feeling the pain now. I do like this DLC because it does have this back and forth mentality to it. Um, and it does, it does extend the gameplay. Normally in the previous games, it felt like... You know, um, the, the game was won by the end of 41, the start of 42. You knew at that stage, uh, if the Germans didn't break them, the uh, Soviets would spam tanks and overwhelm you. And if they did break them, then well. Look at that, but look at that. Production growth plus 5. Industri industrial cost cons uh, 50, minus 15%. Consumer goods plus 5%. That is ridiculously good. Although plus five percent is a bit of a nause. So our industrial concern, we can now go tanker grad and reduce our or we can go here and do supply consumption. But I'm gonna go for reducing our um civilian factories. This is a vague, this can be a vague meta, like people will be able to perfect this, but uh, if this can work with the current build, then I expect it to work in multi multiplayer games, because most multiplayer people are struggling as well. It, yeah, it's a pity, but you didn't see much, I actually lost that, if I'm honest. Um, unfortunately, and then I played offline and I won it, but uh, I have actually think I've, broken, I've sort of broken the back on this, and now I actually understand what the Soviet meta is now, and I feel like um, it's very unique, it's changed completely and um, it's going to be very interesting to see people see how people will adapt to it. But I, multiplayer lobbies are going to have to ban air transport. Uh, lol trash, screw you Fiery, screw you. I'm still trying to understand it. So the, ga the, uh, the game has changed a lot, massively. You get a lot of penalties as the Soviets. And you're playing mostly defensive until the end of 42. So for the most part, you won't be able to have enough production or industry to match the Germans and mass produce tanks uh, like you could in the old days. Now I had to build, now you've got to build a lot of air assets um, to stop the logistics bombings. And you actually have to change at a certain time what the German, what the Soviet army is. You can't, at the start, it's going to be infantry spam 
and then as time goes on you've got to evolve into a tank force and you're gonna have to stack a lot of defensive bonuses so we're plowing along okay and now i'm going to show you i'm going to pause and show you where we are in terms of industry so if you take a look at this we've got 106 civilian factories 34 military now if we do a tag to germany They have 168, 80 civilians, 78 military. And that will just get bigger once they invade France. So already we are behind, but and we cannot afford to switch because once they invade France and get all those civs as well, it's going to be very difficult to um, to match them. And that is why you do not hold the Stalin line. No, you do not hold the, um, the front line. Because if you've got that, Italy, Bulgaria, and say, um, and Hungary, and they're all throwing in as well, you are going to be massively dwarfed in industry, and there's nothing you can do about it. I've been building civs since, since 37, and I can't stop it. So that is why we're going to wait until sort of 1940 before we, sw uh, well, uh, until the Molotov Rippentrop Pact, and then we're going to start switching to. Um, military production because we we will not have enough time and this and once the war st before the war we are also going to have to start mass converting civilian factories to military factories as well so we've done this this is done now uh we're going to go down construction some more i'm going to keep on going i'm actually tempted to see if i can send air volunteers to uh to these boys but sadly not Yeah, you're going to have a really rough, a real rough time of things. So you're going to need at least 300 infantry divisions at the start of uh, Bar, otherwise you've more or less lost. 300 infantry divisions or bust, that's what you've got. That's your two choices. And that does not give you a lot of room to manoeuvre. Bottom of London. Hurrah! Still, I'm building as far as way as possible from Moscow. You can see why. Raw! Huzzah! And then once we go to war with Latvia and all that stuff, that will be our way to farm more air XP and farm more military. Also, I've almost made a tragic mistake. If we go back to our production, we are going to need to start going to that lag two and upgrading our air. Let's upgrade our range. Upgrade our weapons. Lag 3A and carry on. I'm going to start upgrading Leningrad now as well because I'm running out of places to build. So we have 115 civilian factories. Now I'm going to wait till, say, June time before I start switching to mills. This entire area will be overrun by Germans. There's nothing you can do to stop it. The, bar the Germans will have buffs, they'll have better equipment and supply. And so you should not be building anywhere near this front. I'd even say don't. I'm only building here because this is Moscow. So shift to armaments production. And I think uh, once these guys are done. Oh, I'm missing my research. So I don't want any more than two on this, if I'm honest. Um, start researching this equipment as well. Entry equipment researched. Research 1939 equipment. And go from there. And now we're running out of build slots. So guess what? We're now building mills. Probably a bit too early, but uh, there's not much I can do about it. I'm going to build mills over here. Uh, I'm going to start building mills over here. Just 
anything in front of Moscow is try not to build unless you're trying to build Leningrad or something like that. But I've got no choice. I've got no choice. I'm running out of build slots. Imagine not destroying your mentality. Trying, bro. I don't even play. I, I stopped playing COD. I, I got. It feels very generic now. And plus, their advertising was pretty bro. Sign a treaty. Not a non-aggression pact. And then what we're going to do is because we did an agreement, maybe I can send volunteers now. Send attaché. Start land lease. No. Do I get a focus to send stuff? Nope. Yeah. My last one was that Call of Duty World War 2. It just felt very generic. So the reason why we pause now is because now we've got to rush to start doing justifications on these nations. The save PP, just declare on one claim state. Don't declare, declare on all of them. And then wait. Destruction free. I'll be done in a year. Not worth it. I'll start going down in that. Yeah, the same with Battlefield. Battlefield 5 sort of broke me on, on AAA shooters. They just no longer, they can't deliver anymore. They're, just, they're gone. They sort of, they just, I feel like they're just living on their brand now. That's their reputation rather than their actual success. So next, we're going to take our Mountaineers. We're going to dump them on this line and prepare to invade Lithuania. We're going to take all our air assets and dump them over here. And yes, I will be... Oh, I won't be over. If we want, we can send our Tonks over here because they're fully supplied. And we can give them a... We can give them Zukov. Uh, send them here, actually. And then we'll take some soldiers from this sector. Let's take 16 or so. And dump them there. I feel like if you screw up the Stalin, um, if you screw up the Stalin's paranoia, you can potentially massively give yourself by losing a lot of good troops. Take our next 14 soldiers. Move them here. Actually take about 27 or so. The good thing about the Finnish front is that you don't struggle with supply so much because they often leave these tiles undefended. So Molotov, Rip and Tom Pact, we're all we're just mass producing mills now. Mills, 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 mills. Yeah, that's a problem with Call of Duty, Call of Duty because it's, it is quite fun and uh, playing casually, but um, I feel like, especially on PC and that, it can be it dies a lot quicker if it's not an amazing game. And sadly, a lot of the new ones aren't very amazing. They've gone towards micro transaction. Yeah, there was no there was no hype for Vanguard. Like I didn't even know it was being advertised half the time. It was all Battlefield. That was the hype. So next we're going to do Tankograd and then move industry to the Urals once I am ready. Because we've more or less done everything else we need to do. We don't need to do any of this resource stuff. Like, why do you need to do that resource stuff with Russia? There's like, there's no reason to. I don't care about the provocation on the border. You probably should if you're being a meta boy, but I, I don't care.
Let's keep uh, doing this if possible. Oh, wait, we can't. Go away. We need that military XP. And then let's start upgrading. Let's go for... Tenacious Defense. Actually, let's start researching this first. I need more troops on this border. Do I? No, I don't. They're still moving up. Some supply issues here because of the Tonk, but yeah, it's not that bad. Yeah, Call of Duty Vanguard was, was had very little hype. No hype whatsoever, if I'm honest. But um, Battlefield is where the hype was. Everyone thought, oh, Battlefield's going to be amazing. Oh, they, you know, giving back to the fans. Uh, we're going to do... Um, we're going to do... Uh, you know, the portal and that, and then it just became out of buggy mess. And because it's on such an endemic level, you can't do much about it. You can't do anything to stop it. That's okay if you get military experience out of it. Uh, anyone else I can pick? So because a lot of my guys haven't been killed off, I can do any of this garbage. None of this has any value to me. That does have value to me. So let's see if I if I upgrade you and give you one. Save. There we are. I don't think they can fix it. I think like actually in the game itself it's just so buggy that they'd have to like make a new game. Like they, they can't fix the netcode and all that jazz. Okay, next step. 1939. That's maxing out that construction. Optimize our production lines. And that's the bonus the they the, uh, the, the devs have done they've given you a lot of construction bonuses so even though you may not have the same civ count your production count should be greater so tartu is ready to be attacked so let's declare war on tartu let's put the air over it and then let's give the order to attack And we'll start pushing through this sector. Take 20 divisions, give it to a random commander. Again, you eventually work out which commander is the best for the role. And carry on. Oh, you've only seen uh, the elevator glitch. That's cool. But yeah, and that's 10 hours of playing. So maybe just people are overhyping it, but I don't think so. The amount of negative reviews in that game is uh, pretty appalling, if I'm honest. Nah. The amount of negative reviews from it. I don't trust, uh, I don't trust, um, what do you call it, YouTube reviews anymore. Apart from maybe Angry Joe. So because our supply is okay, we're not going to starve. You know if you have, haven't done your supply properly because uh, you'll end up starving and not being able to attack in this sector. If you're really uh, try hard, you can bring out your fleet and your fleet will start doing stuff. And then your tanks can now start blitzkrieging around. Uh, let's pin this. That's the thing, like if you've got YouTube fans, like it doesn't really matter about the game, is this personality driven? But I don't know, bro, I don't know. I think a lot of people are unhappy with the current status quo on that game.
So once again, keep mass building your mills up. If pretty much won this, we can now counter-attack and clear it out. And then because there's supply coming from this port, we can motorise it and that should feed the rest of our army. You can, you can no longer do these grand encirclements because of the supply lines, which is interesting, but um, it's just a point to note. And because we didn't claim all the states, we can just take all of this without wasting any PP. Okay, well I'm just going to wait for a sale and then I'll get that bad boy, but uh, for now I'm just holding out. So next on the list is this fellow. And where are we going to put our supply? So where's the enemy supply line? It's there. So if we could punch through or punch through from the north, we'd be happy boys. But you can see how much easier that was because of that air superiority. So I think Air Russia will be initially the, 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 the way to go. Especially with American land lease. American land lease, you just can't ignore it anymore. Because people just bomb your supply lines and you just start. You just can't ignore it. Okay. Oh, have I justified war on you yet? No, I haven't. Again, we don't need to declare war on everything. Let's declare on one. Justify, declare war, go in. Send the tanks down. Oh yeah, give the order to these guys. Keep them pinned. I would recommend, if you've got a PC gamer, go for Grand Tactician American Civil War. It's not graphically impressive, but it is a really fun game and it's going to be really entertaining. Um, I highly recommend Grand Tac uh, if you're looking for a strategy game. But this is done. Everything you need from this tree is now done. You can do this if you want, but there's no point. Now you need to shift back over and start going down the means to wage war and then development of Tanko Grad. So I'm just going to hold here because another gimmick with this game is that supply comes from the HQ. So if I go and take uh, from the next capital, so if I go and take this capital, the supply will start appearing here, which is a bit buggy, meaning that um, these guys will be all full of supply again. So that's something I don't want to do. I just want to chill out, do nothing, wait for this to eventually come collapsing on itself and then go from there. I like BF1. I find it really fun. A lot of people said it was bad. I didn't think it was bad. I think it was actually really entertaining. Like the, 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 the sheer scope of it. Next, we're going to start mass producing guns. And we're going to mass produce the shit out of these guns. And you know when to start going off um, free trade is when you start running out of supply. Well, when you start running out of resources. Because if you're running out of resources as a Soviet Union, then um, you're doing something naughty. So next time we get enough PP, we're going to go off to limited exports. And with that, we can take all states. And then we send these guys around here. Move the plan there. Uh, we can take these guys off now. These guys... Oh, wait. Where's the orange? Orange can go back over here now. And we can wait. Yeah, I hear BF4. I've actually never, I've never played BF4, but I hear BF4 was the sort of the best of the best. I like Bad Company 2. I found Bad Company 2 very fun.
Let's go uh, manage occupied states and go with liberated workers, even though it doesn't really matter. Start mad researching, uh, researching anti-air. I feel like these researchers are now e more easy to get hold to. Hold of. They're no longer as difficult. To, uh, they no longer take as long to get. And I have made a tragic mistake. That's going to take me 130 days. But that shouldn't be the end of the world. So next on the agenda, it will be researching our air doctrines. Okay, send our tanks up over here. Move our air over here. Uh, we keep researching that production. You'll need it. You like you will need it. Like production. Like this. This is the one bonus Germany. Uh, the Soviets do get like cess Like they can boom really quickly. Or they won't boom in sieve count, but they will boom in production uh, ratios. So my tanks are moving over. We can now justify war, or we can now declare war. Uh, these 20 can now go on the attack, and my four divisions can now start moving forward. Now the funny thing here is that sometimes the, uh, the Finnish don't garrison their ports. Well, don't garrison, doesn't actually garrison this defensive line, which is rather funny. Like, see, this is not garrisoned in the slightest. Development of Tanko Grad is next. Can we go to limited exports? Not yet. Ah, oh, but they garrisoned it this time. Still, they're not piercing me, even though my arm is garbage. And then we can send the rest beelining down to Helsinki. I have, I have played, uh, but it feels like you need a clan to get things done in uh, in Foxhole. Foxhole is great fun, and it, it's one of the few games that simulates a massive war. But um, it, uh, you do need a sort of, uh, it's, 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 it's a clan game of organisation now, which is really interesting, but uh, it's a bit tedious because sometimes you'll be spending a long time doing very little of anything, um, building up supply lines to go to war. Let's make these motorised so these guys don't starve. Royce. Yay, we encircled one unit. Keep pushing forward. And now you can just bomb your way to Helsinki. Of course, if Finland was an actual player, then um, this would not be as easy. There we are. Head up to Tampere. None of these have supply, but that doesn't matter because they're not... That, we don't actually attack on that front, we attack over here. Now, I reckon this is going to be a very, rather painful war. If you're um, if you're playing, say, um, if if you're playing, it's a player Finland because they will know how to drag that war out now with the current uh, current DLC. Still waiting to uh, to finally pay off our debts. Oh no, they cut me off. I better leave a tank in Helsinki just in case. There we go. Our soldiers are needed elsewhere. White peace, and now we no longer have to worry about Finland because actually Finland has not joined the war. And we've got our PP, so limited exports. And now we wait. It can be quite difficult to save enough PP to do everything you need to do in this, which is quite uh, quite awkward. Let's go to this as well. This is oh god, we made a mistake there. That's why we're getting very few, very little army experience. Infantry equipment, yes. Next. And let's start training up as many of these as possible. So I want about another 200 divisions, so do this twice. What's my supply like? So I am low on guns and artillery and anti-air, but not by a lot. Not by a lot. Warship. 
What on earth were you guys doing over there? That's a big ouchie. And then we're starting to max out our air production. We're going to disperse industry. Uh, we're going into construction. We're just mass, we're massing everything now. Actually, we're going to go and research improved equipment conversion for future endeavors. Because you will have to be converting um, sieves to mills. So we've done development of Tanko Grad. That should have given us a big old boost to our, uh, our mill count. So that's 85. If I end the turn, that's still 85. I guess not. Maybe it already happened. I wasn't paying attention. But generally, what does Tanko Grad do? Adds one building slot and one military factory to every state in the Euros in the Far East with at least three military factories. So now we're going to do strength and mobilization. And we're going down here so we can move the industry to the Urals, which we can do hopefully before the end of the war. Now I assume I built in the right place, because it's the trans Urals, so if not then uh, I'll be very upset. Start max mass production on our next guns. This looks pretty healthy. This doesn't look too bad either. What about our support equipment? Our support equipment is also very good. So if we give these guys potentially logistics companies, we'll have 382 left in stock, which is great. So all together, I'll give you, let you guys look to see how much I'm putting in each thing. And bear in mind, it's not max production yet. You can see that once it does get to max production, we're going to be churning these boys out. But the main effort right now is our air. So it's May 1940, let's do a tag switch, tag Germany and see where they are in their own civ count. 289, and they're going to still be booming. So they've got 156 mils and 107 civilian. Whereas I do not. I've got 87 mils and they have, and 128 civs. So I've got more civs, but bear in mind, this is not, that's Italy, the Soviet Union, Hungary, Bulgaria, and Romania's civ count. And by the time it gets to Barb, these guys will be even bigger and even badder. So get rid of all of this. Because all we really need is the war stuff. And you'll know why later. Still mass producing. Anything west east of Moscow is generally safe, even though Stalingrad can be a bit dangerous at times. And you can see our manpower is actually really bad. Strength and mobilization plan. Military engineering next. So because we have defense industry, we get some bonuses. And these bonuses will be important later on. I do like the Red Army songs that play once, once the war starts. I'm still not going to invest heavily into tanks because any expensive tank, because tanks are too expensive. If you want to make good tanks that don't get pierced, it's going to take you years to make any decent tank battalions. Tanks have been hard nerfed in this uh, in this patch, so uh, or in this DLC. So don't expect tanks to be the great deciders as they as they were. Now you're going to see much less tanks, and they're going to be of less value. So we're going to move in, attack. We've got our air up, we're going to be good and healthy and everything's going to be fine. Yeah, tanks have, tanks have become more tactical. You're not going to get a large scale encirclements anymore because the supply will be so bad in a lot of areas you won't be able to do much about it. 
uh, and your tanks will be able to push for a little bit and starve. So what I envision tanks being is I'm, envision, I'm envisioning people taking infantry off the line to do mass tank pushes or I'm expecting them just to be like the sledgehammers to punch through supply points and then the infantry in circles. I don't think tanks are the deciders of the game anymore, which is very interesting. I can switch to something else. This is a waste. I suppose I could start researching armor trains, but I don't need to have this built. Uh, let's start re uh, researching recon. Because you can't, because there's just not enough supply for, to use your tanks uh, effectively. In 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 at least in the West, in the Eastern Front. So I expect either people will diversify and have large tank armies with little infantry to stop the supply or they will um, just use tanks to, uh, in the limited capacity. Uh, so for example, they will use it to punch through to a supply point and then once they run out of fuel they will retreat and then attack again and retreat to a supply point and attack again and only be used sparingly for limited engagements. You're not going to see the big encirclements he once did uh, happening within 10 seconds. You may still see big encirclements, that's not um, the ones we're used to, if you know what I mean. In the old, uh, in the old Hive 4. Am I moving stuff? Yeah, it's going to take me 70 days. And then we're almost good. There we are, and then take all states and turn. And this is when we begin building up a defensive line. So I'm actually going to move my armor to this little crevice here, because that is where the defense of Moscow normally occurs in this little area there. Then I'm going to start dividing up my units to 20 whips. 20 whips, 18 whips, it doesn't really matter. 16 whips. Uh, that's not what I wanted to do. Off it down. 23, and there we are. And then we're going to make our general. Yeah, tanks, you're, you're not going to see the... You can still still Blitzkriegs, but only after a lot of build-up. And a lot of people aren't going to be willing to do that. So while we're doing that, I can literally just do this. There we are. Oh, 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 oh. I'm not putting any troops to defend Finland because no one attacks. For, uh, Finland doesn't attack in this patch, but you would probably have to give 20 or so divisions to defend northern the northern territories as well. Maybe just put some tanks up there. They're not going to be any use until um, until later. So why am I not using my political power? It's because um, so I do static warfare. Yeah. Um, I'm going to need to use it for the movement of industry out of the Urals. I'm not spending anything on this. This is not worth it. And our mountaineers, they can do whatever they like. They can join one of these. Let's half that down. If you're being a really technical boy, you can put them on... Um, you can put them in the forests. Supply, production, we're good. We can do more construction if we want. And this is, that's the saving grace of the Soviet Union, is the fact that once you, the bonuses to your production line is what makes you almost on par with the, with the, uh, with the Soviets, well, with the Germans. So we'll flip back out in a second and show you what uh, our civ counts are compared um, to the Germans by 1941.
1941 kicks in and I need to build more mills. What did I say? What did I say? Build them over here. There we are. Okay, and why am I getting rebellions? Because I don't have enough men. I am going to have to spend this on limited conscription, which I don't want to do, but hey-ho. Move industry to Urals. There we are. So what do we do next? Now, the reason why we've done move industry to Europe before 1941 is because it allows us to move all of this out away from the Germans. So now we can move all those resources out and now our industry will hopefully be rather protected and the Germans get nothing. So we've done this, we can now do improve the Stalin line, or cohesion first. I'm probably going to go down cohesion first, and then I'll do the Stalin line after. I could hard research the next air. But that's going to take such a long time, it's not really worth doing. So instead, we're going to research... Disperse industry some more. And over here, we've got our first batch of troops. They're going to make a new theatre. Going to split them up again. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. There we are. And then all of these guys are going to get troops. Are going to get issued to someone. There we are. And I'm going to add a new guy. Uh, we'll upgrade this guy. Again, if you want to be really meta about it, you'd be selecting really good guys, which you've trained up through the years. But we're not going to bother. So now we're on 200 division strength. So we are almost at where we need to be to hold the Stalin line. Well, not hold the Stalin line, but to survive the, uh, the German onslaught. Low manpower, but that's okay. And all of this has been relocated. We'll relocate the last one for the next. And this means that all our industry will be away from the Germans before the war starts. Because another thing what happens that potentially loses the game for you is they push too far. You you may survive 1941, but you won't have enough industry to actually fight back. When we get a new batch, we'll have some garrisons because the, uh, the Italians do like to do some naval invasions. They are quite cheeky like that. So we're going to do rehabilitated military because we have to go down these focuses um, just to actually get rid of our penalties. But once we get to like this and organization of partisans and that, this is when we make the comeback. But you need to survive to, to the end of 1942. That's when you can start winning. And the comeback begins. Can I produce any tanks? Probably not. Uh, this can go back up. One, two, three, four. How is my industry doing? We're making two lags a day. That's not bad. It could be worse. I'm going to start mass training these guys so they're all ready for war. They're all trained up and ready to go. These 15 are going to be garrisons. 
Gary Boys. And we're going to garrison here, here, here. Hmm. Pretty much everywhere because those filthy Italians like to naval invade everywhere. They will trial invade everything and you can't afford another front. Funny enough, you don't have the men power as, as the Soviet Union to make another front. You just can't do it. So you've got to make sure all these ports are covered. Once the ports are garrisoned, you're good to go. And spend more on rubber. Not getting a lot of PP, but uh, it is what it is. We're beginning to get some supply issues, but nothing too bad yet. It's only this one sector there, but uh, just in case, we may upgrade it some more. So let's go to our supply, because I don't want it to break through here and starve me. So make sure this is a level 3. Make sure this is a level 3. Is this a level 3? I can't tell. Level 3. Uh, turn this into a level 4. Level four, level four, level three. Actually, it's to make sure they're all level threes. I don't want level fours; they're too expensive. How do I get rid of you? I can't see you. There you are. Level three, level three, level three, level three, level three, level three, level three. and level three. And I'm tempted to actually not do that one. Or that one. And instead go this way. There we are. One, two, three, four, five, six. Level three is a pretty good place to be for infantry holding. I don't want to overtrain. I just want them to be trained, if you know what I mean. So, how many of these have we got? We have not got enough support equipment. So, that's something we need to take a look at. We got guns out the arse. So, let's get that up and then that up. How many days for this to be fixed? 145 days, that's enough. Military reorganization, we'll take that. Uh, we just had a new research focus. Let's go with artillery. Now we should have a lot of air in reserve now. Well, actually, we don't, but hey ho. We should get to a stage, and again, it's not to have masses of air, it's just to have enough to at least contest the air in important places. Hmm. I no, le no longer need to look at you anymore. Can't afford you anymore. And this is almost done. Still a bit of a nuisance that this is getting not enough supply, but it's sort of purpley blue, so it's workable. Um, hello? Why are you being supplied from there? Let's actually take a look at our supply lines, make sure they are up to snuff. So I need this upgraded. 
to level 3. And he disupgraded to level 3. I'll be fine, it's just to get to that rail network. Okay, now we're in a desperate state. Because if we lose the supply network in um, let's it at Minsk, then we do potentially suffer the risk from starvation. So this is why we're max upgrading this now. Now I said I'd show you what the Germans are like. So I've got 140 mils and 140. 38 sieves. Now if I tag Germany, they have got 163 mils and 133 sieves, so they're just downright better. Which we can't afford for that to happen. So what we need to do now is make sure all our guys are unyielding defenders. Every infantry force must be an unyielding defender. And then we have to wait until this is all fixed, which is going to take time. Okay, I don't think I can afford to do this anymore. I'm going to have to start bite the bullet on this and uh, accept that supply may not be as good as I want it to be. So we're going to stop this now. And then we're going to start doing military conversions. So this has been done. So guess what? We're going to start converting our sieves to mills. Next, we'll do improve the standing line. Make a new squad. Put them over here. And we are almost at that sweet spot of 200, uh, 300 divisions. Really, 300 divisions is your sweet spot. Anything less and uh, it's GG. Next, I'm going to see if I can add um, defensive bonuses. And then tenacious defense. And then for these guys, keep farting those guys out like it's going out of style. And finally, we can finish this off with, I don't know, um, Anti-air, why not? And you can see we're still struggling to meet all our gun limits even though we're putting so much into our air force. That's six of five, that's six of five. So what I need to do is make a second army, our second, uh, second theatre. Let's just promote you, why not? You're being cowed by Stalin, so that's a rather bad idea, but you know how it is. Okay. 
And there we are. And we're almost ready for the war. Mm, we could do artillery. We could go up rocket artillery now if we wanted as well. If they want to get that extra infantry breakthrough. But um, I'm not going to bother. I may be tempted to actually research the BTLR. Because we have pretty much everything we need. There we are. So I'm going to stop converting once I've got at least um, 30 mils left or 30 sieves left so I can keep at least some military construction going. If we're feeling particularly cheeky we can do some Interwar bombers, they're not going to be very good, but um, hey ho. Probably should have done that a bit earlier, but hey ho, is what it is. And there you go, they're justifying war, but hopefully we'll have everything we need. Yep, we've got our 300 divisions. So this is what my build order was. Full stack on improved artillery, full stack on anti-air, uh, 30 on PPSHs, and the rest on trucks, armor, and so on. So we've improved the standard line, that's been done. Let's do experts in uh, camouflage. Almost ready. And we may as well go to extensive conscription because we will be running out of men after a certain level. Uh, let's deploy all the tanks in this sector. Any tanks you've got for me, put reinforcement on the main priority. My biggest deficit is still guns, but it's going to be gone in 66 days. Um, let's do some more conversions then, shall we? Still got far too many... Uh, Sivs. So until I've got rid of those 10, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, this can go, then we're good to go. And that should be enough to feed the Red Army and, and for us to survive this, uh, this engagement. And you are going to need to do this, unless you've got a really bad Germany, you're definitely going to need to do this because you're not going to have enough mills to, uh, to withstand it. So we're going to do um, all weather and then we're going to save up the rest of our PP for the destruction of railroads and so on. Make sure all my ports are covered, which they are. They don't have to be too well covered, just enough to stop any bad men coming. Because we've got so much support artillery, what we can do is actually add an artillery into our line defence and see what happens. Actually, no, we wouldn't. We can't. So let's not do that. But fingers crossed, eventually we will be able to. 
So we're going to add this to our defensive line. I'm going to add this to our defensive line. And that is 100, 200. Forty, fifty, sixty, seventy, almost ready. Might as well dump the rest of the men now because even though we don't have enough equipment, um, we may as well. Again, you probably want to pick better than what I have done. Let's start sticking out our air. I'll put thirty on that, or three hundred. Put three hundred on this. Put uh, another thousand on this, if possible. Another five hundred. And again, it's just because it's slowing them down. You're not going to be, you're not going to be winning the air war. But you're just going to be potentially countering theirs. You will be winning the air war if you have allied land lease, but you're not going to get that, unfortunately. Um, unfortunately, uh, in single player. And then let us do not impregnable thoughts, that's pointless. Um suppose we can wait until the next step, which will be the invasion of Russia. So we can wait now. Have we got any more air we can throw out? Not really. So this will be an air war. So this is what I'm talking about when it comes to how the games transition. You're gonna be human wave garbage at the start. However, as the war goes on, you're gonna be stacking defensive bonuses and then eventually you're going to hopefully be able to um, change that and become um, a armor force. So instead of the war being won in 1941, the war will be, begin in most multiplayer games, you'll begin winning the war in, say, 19, uh, 1940, uh, 1942, 1943. That's when people start realizing that, ah, actually, maybe I'm done for. So I'm not going to spend any more of my PP because I'm going to need it to destroy infrastructure. I'm going to send these guys back. Make sure everyone has an order on this and this and this. And there we go. The war starts. Let's save the game. And now I'm going to toggle the fog of war to show you the situation for the enemy. So, as you can see here, they've got a load of infantry. They're equipped with pretty good troops. They're three artillery, nine, one, one, one. So these are very strong infantry units. They've also got rail guns, and they're going to have an awful lot of air. So if we take a look at their air, can I see their air numbers? Mm, no, I can't, but they're going to have an awful lot of it. So, in consequence, they're going to have all these troops. And in multiplayer, they're probably going to have a load of tanks. You're going to have the Romanian troops down south. You're going to have the Hungarians and potentially the Bulgarians and the Italians. Got rather lucky here. I blow this as well. Blow this. Blow this. Um, there's a supply hub on there, so I can't blow that. Can't blow this. Can't blow this. Can blow this. I uh, can't. I've run out of PP. In any case, this is where we cancel this objective and go down disparate measures. And this is where this is really important. You see all these little buffs on the right, left-hand side. Um, for the motherland, for example, Armix B gain, breakthrough plus 10%. Um, eventually we'll get, we shall defend Moscow or fight to our last drop. And this will give you even greater bonuses that will help you survive next the upcoming battle.
that are probably going to be starting to begin to trade with me, so I'm going to start moving some of my air over here. And again, this would work with an American land lease. Uh, over time, you'd be getting that air. You can see the rather irksome Germans are trying to do uh, naval landings. And in fact, the game hasn't told me it's trying to do that, which is also pretty irksome. And then we just have to wait and hope for the best. Probably should have more troops defending uh, those front lines, but hey ho, there's not much we can do about it. Uh, defending the ports, but again, in a multiplayer game, you'd be doing that. So here we go, the initial attempts at breakthrough, but they should be poorly supplied or at least suffering from poor supply. And they should stop struggling. Although I'm also struggling, but I don't know why. That might be why. Should have perhaps built that rail line in the centre more, but uh, hey how it is what it is. Remember, if I'm starving, they're going to be starving as well. Upgrade this. Upgrade this. Upgrade this. Upgrade this. Right, where's that enemy air superiority? It's over here. So once again, deviate assets down to there. There's our desperate measures. Let's go for adaptive army. We've got more tanks. Uh, up, promoter commander. There you go. This will break because we won't have enough supply to feed it. But uh, hey ho. And now we can start using like staggered retreat and things like that to uh, slow down the advance. But we are just trying to survive until the end of the, uh, well, until the, until, the, until the end of 1942. So the trading's going to be pretty bad initially. But not as bad as the Germans, but then again, remember this would be fighter twos in a multiplayer game. If anyone does break through, you need to adjust and, re and relocate the supplies. That's very important that you do that. But they've advanced in, and now they're going to start doing barber bad on the supply front. Meanwhile, we should be doing okay. We can also do staggered retreat now, which will be an active for... Uh, how long is it active for? I didn't say. But well, we can do this to increase our defence. We can raise militias, which will of course improve our defence even more. Okay, here's the assaults coming through. So what we recommend to do is fight to the last drop and start using these bonuses. It's really important that you use these bonuses.
So potentially you should be saving up more PP than I have. Yeah, we're losing some air, but that's okay because bu, 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 we can now upgrade our air supply by doing this, or upgrade our air. And remember, you'd be getting more air from... The, um, the allies, so I love the violin list. So because we're stacking bonuses, it's very difficult for them to push. Now, eventually they will break over if they're good enough, but this is before I try the air meta on it. So it's just a case of waiting. That's all we're going to do. Let's wait, make, keep an eye on everything, make sure nothing's going to be taken or pushed out. Watch as the uh, R supply once again plummets for some unknown reason. That's probably why. Potentially stop conversions as well because perhaps we are overzealous in our conversions. Yeah. Take a look at our supply lines. It's still this is still, still is red. Um, not much I can do about that until I upgrade the rail lines to here. Same in this sector. I sort of need to upgrade the rail lines over here as well. But they're only slightly undersupplied. It's not that bad. Normally, they would be attacking very hard in these sectors, but it looks like they're not bothering this time. I guess they know that I can win. Get land lease, they're giving us air, which is great. Of course, the US would be giving us a lot more air, but uh, they hope. And you're going to need to do this because the multiplayer, until they ban air transports, the Germany's players just going to spam air transports and then you have no, they'll have no supply issues. An adapter army, a BTR, I don't know why I bothered researching that, I'm not going to bother actually using it. Potentially, you could if you are playing a multiplayer or that, you're that way inclined, but. For all intents and purposes, not going to bother. So we can see we're starting to get big old bonuses for winter. Um, military organization and experts and camouflage, increase, increasing our entrenchment and reducing our damage from CAS. Eventually, we'll go down to Smirsh and barrier troops will give us more org regain. Um, greater political advisors, or we can do this one for division attack on core territory, which is really good. And eventually, the Red Army, which will make us exceptionally great. But uh, for all intents and purposes, our next step will be the Polytechnic Institute, and then we'll never have to worry about supply again. There you are, there's the next offensive. See, they're starting to break through, so we're immediately going to go for... Um, oh, they stopped breaking through, but you can go for Raised Factory Militia or Staggered Retreat, but we're still using Staggered Retreat. So here's your breakthrough there by the tanks and the planes. Um, I can't do much about that. I can't even do desperate defence. But we're going to shift our air assets up back up north. Turn this on. Upgrade even more. Hopefully we can trade better and stop them bombing us, but if not, then uh, we could have problems. Let's put everyone on this sector. Awesome. 
Crack out desperate defense. See what's wrong here. Move these guys in. Just, just in time. Potentially retreat some units over to this sector. Can't raise factory militias over there, which is a pain, but hey ho. Let's keep this in check. Winter should be coming in. But if this, was a, if this was a multiplayer game, you would be pushed off to stand in line. It's not pretty clear that that would happen. Once I'm comfortable that the air war is more or less over, I'll start mass producing tanks. Unfortunately, I don't think I'm going to be comfortable about that. So, guess what? I'm going to start relocating our assets down south. Just surviving till winter, boys. That's all we got to do. Survive till winter. Should I start researching the next fighter? Yeah, don't bother. Mm, reduction efficiency, that's no point in that. Let's research this. Okay, breakthrough's taking place. Um, see if we can counterattack. Any other breakthroughs elsewhere? Mm, some breakthroughs on this sector. And our air is starting to struggle. Yeah, we're a bit low, we're pretty low on air. Still, let's move these guys back out into uh, over here. Take half of these off. Uh, put them on there. Take the other half off. Put them over here. Because they're not pushing up north, I couldn't care less about that. It is now winter time. And we can now do staggered retreat again for our organisation. Can't do this yet. And our supplies are rough. Let's put these guys back in here. If possible, can I upgrade this rail hub some more? Where is your lack of supply? It's coming from this railroad, apparently. Why are you being fed from there? That's the question. Still, our guns are extremely good now, so we can really start peeling this off. Our improved anti-air is good, and our infantry units should really start coming into their own now. So if we go to our infantry, start equipping them with uh, artillery shells, see if we can fill that. No, but we're almost there.
Winter's set in and their supply should be failing just as badly as mine. Because we haven't been pushed that far back, I think I'm just going to go down to uh, the deep battle next. And if we take a look at our casualties, 700k to my 79k. So you can see that uh, the, the casualties are disproportionate, to say the least. Especially because they're attacking through winter, you're just surviving until winter as the, as, as the Soviets. And then once that's done, you really won't have any further problems. And you can see that these guys are beginning to starve in these sectors because of the low supply. And if we actually do a tag switch, let's do a tag switch now to Germany, shall we? If we take a look at their supply, they haven't got a lot of medium tanks. They are losing stuff hand over fist, and their supply lines are dwindling on the front. Still got pretty healthy supply lines elsewhere, but along the Stalin line, that shouldn't be that bad. Still, they have a lot more mills than us, so that's why you've got to play this sort of defensive game and wear them down. And bear in mind, this isn't even the hard part for them. It's when they start pushing it further inland, that's when uh, things start really working out badly for them. We can start researching armor chassis, but there's no real need to. And the air should no longer prove that much of an issue. We're going to bring our air down temporarily while we um, try and recover. And this will take some time, but over winter it should be perfectly fine. And we should get these back in about 22 days. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. No need for Motherland Coals, no need for every hit. Uh, breakthrough, you don't really need Breakthrough on the defence, so there's no need for that either. Okay, if they're still air bombarding us in this sector, then we're going to have to put the air up in this sector here. And just start trading in this sector. You can see the Italian planes are now being a nightmare. That's why you are going to rely on land lease. You're going to need a good American player for, to, for to be a good Soviet player. You need a good, a good American player. Take a look at infrastructure. Why are we struggling in this sector? Because... Bah, 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 bah. This is level 3, level 3, level 3, level 3, level 3, level 3, level 3. It's just because it is. So instead let's start building mills. We could go level 4, but there's no point. And plus, if we lose that position, then again, there's no point. We can do... Uh, can we do enhanced workers' conditions to get our... Yeah, we can, but it costs 100. It's not worth it. Get our stability up. Okay, they put their air back up. I'm not going to put my air up anytime soon until I see that. 
and then my air's going to go back up. Normally you'd be playing this on about 3 speed or so, so bear that in mind when you're playing this, um, if you do go into a multiplayer lobby. Equally, the, al uh, the allies should be sending you tanks and so on and so forth, uh, and you should be in a good spot. Now that the air is contested, I no longer have to worry about any of this garbage. It's all wonderfully green. Apart from that one, but I'm not too worried yet. And then it's gone green again. Uh, upgrade these to Defensive Doctrine to in increase that max entrenchment. Anything else I can upgrade? Can I upgrade you? Uh, defensive Doctrine, why not? I can't, actually. Actually, can I give you, like, Officer Core roles? No, I can't. Because that might be an idea. I get Zukov to be an Officer Core role or something like that. And now we can wait. This has been the most successful I've had, success I've had in the Soviet Union so far. And because of that road of life, our supply should now just be really good. We should have an, no issues with our supply. Yeah, you can see it's all coming back. And, um... We should be okay. Let's go with the defense of Moscow, just in case. We've got about 50 factories just churning that, those fighters out. We've got Wow, we've got so much stuff. I don't know what that does, but we'll find out. Let's keep going on logistics, why not? At this stage, it's a pretty, pretty done deal. Because it's DLC, I reckon they may need to like expand the research tree. Because pretty much the research tree is about done. So this would not be a successful multiplayer player. They would achieve breakthroughs because they will have initial air superiority. However, if you're holding this as well as, as I am, and you're getting air from the Americans, and you're getting that land lease, and you're getting those convoys, by the time they break through, you will be in a good spot. We now have 11k artillery, so we can start adding artillery to our units. He says, yes we can. And it's getting to that 1942 point, so we are getting to that dangerous level of being exceptionally, like, overwhelmingly good. So we've still got our 300 divisions intact. 300 divisions are your, is your sweet spot. Anything else is a bit overkill. So we're going to leave these for offensives, but we're not going to add any more to them. And then we are going to take some off our supply and start moving them onto our light tank design. Again, we're doing crap light tanks because A, they're so expensive to make, and B, uh, supply-wise, you're never going to be really doing a very good job of them. You can't do uh, any of this, so we, let's go down this fellow and let's take our time. It's going to be a culmination of that air, that land lease, um, the defensive bonuses and all of this. This is a must. Like, I'm not even using this and the amount of bonuses I will get from this is exceptional. Pretty even trades, even though I'm not... Uh, getting a lot of air and I'm constantly upgrading them there we are I 
I wonder if I can get an air designer. No, I can't. That's a shame. Infantry designer. That's pretty worthless. Army regrouping. We'll add that. Why not? I also have not researched anything in spies because you don't have the industry. You just can't afford it. And then... We are good. I mean, there's literally nothing else to build. Uh, I suppose we could build... Construction. The lines held. Of course, they're going to build up their supply lines over time. But it's not going to matter. I call my guys off air superiority. Because I don't need them. And I don't want them to starve too badly. And we're getting more and more light tanks. If we're feeling particularly bold, we can start upgrading them. Adding some more armor to them, to their designs. Um, to get them to an acceptable level. I want them to about 10 kilometers per hour. 92% is fine. You're never going to beat the Germans on your air. This is not going to happen, but you are going to... Uh, starve them. You are going to wear them down, which is very, very important. I don't know why you decided to join the, the, armor, the armor gang, but uh, you can join the Gary boys, why not? Oh, let's pause. Zoom in. Can't do desperate defense with you boys, so I'm going to retreat this out. And I'm going to treat this out, and this out. And then we're going to carry on. Nineteen forty-two. They're actually losing to a, a Greek invasion down south, which is great news for me. And of course, I can keep on upgrading these fellows. So why not? It should be done soon, and then I think I can start going down Lessons of War. When can I actually go down Lessons of War? No, Desperate Measures doesn't end until... Um, that's Desperate Measures. Fifth of August, so May, June, July, August. So you may as well research something else while you wait. Let's do socialist realism. And continue waiting. If you're feeling particularly cheeky, what you can do is start, I don't know, building supply hubs down south for some sort of amazing push. So if I build a supply hub, say, here. And then I think I can do a focus that will allow me to give me 300% build increase. Uh, where's that focus? I don't need this. Uh... Damn, it's not there. You can sometimes get a focus uh, or a political decision that allows you to quickly reproduce. Uh, well, not reproduce. Uh, <laughs> not quickly reproduce. I mean, uh, quickly uh, build supply depots, but I don't know where it is. But this is a build that somewhat works. Um, it will work for the most part, and eventually you'll be able to get your tanks out, and the supply damage against the enemy will get you where you need to go. Let's begin upgrading our improved artillery. Oh, you can upgrade these fellows now. That's cool. Why bother though? Our air's back up.
Let's start upgrading our infantry equipment. Uh, let's hard research this as well. Oh, pause. Move this over, move this over, get these guys on. I can't get you guys on desperate defense, which is unfortunate. Let's take a look at the damage done. Because they're so low supply, they're getting minus 8% attack, minus 30% breakthrough. Meanwhile, I have got 784 defense and 373 attack. And they've put 34 divisions in this area just to try and break out, but uh, it's not going to work. We take a look at the casualties. 2 million to my 189,000. Says <laughs> basically that tells you everything you need to know. Once again, keep going. Even their panzers aren't doing very well. But again, again, tanks. The, the tank meta has died a death in this uh, in this build. So what are we waiting for? Why aren't we pushing? It's because we've still got some debuffs, like arm experience gain, divisional organization, training time, experience soldier losses. However, as time goes on. Make sure you check this. Oh, I can't go to that air paranoia. In any case, um, as time goes on, we will be getting more bonuses to winter, acclimatization, things like that, which means that we will effectively start beating the enemy units pound for pound. And plus, we're wearing down the German supply lines, um, etc., etc doing this. Once again, any attempt at breakthrough, we immediately seal that pocket back off. Got our socialist realism. How much is that going to take me? It's going to take me 35 days. Let's use this to get that. Oh, are they going to break through? Might do. Oh, if I can help it though. Good thing I've got my supply lines up. And I like to use a double layer defense. Um, so once they get pushed off, I can. Oh, once I see a area being damaged, I can send more troops. So I would normally have a front layer and a second rear layer of troops behind. But I'm not sure how that would work with the current supply systems. Now let's stop and tag switch Germany. So what am I, what's my industry like? I'm building one supply depot down south. I don't have a lot of Fair factories, but my I have a lot of resources on hand. I've got plenty of tanks in the bank ready to go, and I'm beginning to quickly mass produce a lot of stuff. Now, if we tag switch to, and and it's good equipment as well. It's not garbage. It's good equipment, high up, high infantry equipment, high uh, artillery, high anti air. Now, if we tag Germany and see what their situation is like. They're starting to lose in armoured cars, they're running out of anti-air, they're running out of trucks and support equipment and infantry. Their supply lines are beginning, they're still pretty bad on the front lines, and their tanks are gone. They've still got a load of trains, and their infantry equipment is still pretty good, but it's running out. Equally, they have a long list of things they need to repair in France because of uh, bombing. Holland, Loire, Brittany, Burgoyne, Normandy, 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 Eau de Gras, Minsk, and all of that. So they have all of these they need to repair. So all that industry, that advantage they have in their sieve count, 
is now having to go towards that, especially if people start relieving the bands on strategic bombing, uh, logistics bombing, things like that. Now, either lobbies are going to go with ban it all because they don't like strategic bombing, um, in which case it's going to be very d difficult as a Soviet Union because the Germany is still going to be able to build more, more uh, military factories, whereas you can't, or they're going to allow it and then it's going to be a more fairer game because they've still got lots of supplies they can still build mills however they have to make a choice between building their mills or saving their industry and normally of course a uh, intelligent player will not just constantly bombard, they'll try and break through and build up supply lines and things like that. Some would argue to defend the Polish frontier, I would not, you are just going to get encircled and the way supply works right now, you're going to end up losing hundreds of divisions by air from uh, air going so slow from lack of supply, being go so, going so slow from lack, lack of air superiority and uh, generally having a bad, bad time. So we're going to start adding the rest of our planes. One, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four. And we're going to upgrade our air some more. Actually, we're not because we can't afford it. Can we, yeah, we can afford this. Let's start going down Lessons of War. This will give us a massive bonus, so already we're going to get that plus 5% organisation, plus experience gain, no longer cowed by Stalin, and we're going to just get better and better, and this is going to do a lot of damage to uh, the enemy infrastructure as time goes on. So, let's go for air superiority again if we can. Starting to win that air war. Pump out some more mills. I don't know what that effect was, but apparently now I can build stuff with impunity. And eventually we'll get order 227. This will increase our defense massively, meaning it's almost impossible for them to attack us. And like 20 plus 25 percent defense. If you survive to get this, they're not going to push you anymore for how many? How long does this go for? So for two years, for two years, it's basically GG for the Germans. They are going, they're not going to be able to push you with that sort of bonus. And then you're going to start going to get operations um, to counterattack and things like that. And it is just going to be the gradual pushback. You are just trying to survive until you get to lessons of war, and then you're good to go. All right? How's the air trading? Four to four, three to what two? Oh, it's not the best, but uh, it could be worse. Let's start readying the air crews. Okay, we're gonna have a big war on the air. Are we fine? Let's do it. You want to go big? We can go big. So lessons of war, you can immediately pop this once you've got enough. Let's go down organization of the partisans. Also, a rather disgusting way you can go down is go down this way. That increases guerrilla tactics, uh, increases resistance growth by 25%. Uh, you'll really do a lot of damage if you're inclined to do human wave tactics. Uh, air combat training, let's go for that, why not? I should have gone for tank designer, but I haven't, so hey-ho. The more you learn. Pretty even battle, but, well, not even. We would eventually lose these trades. However, and that's big however, 
not with American land lease because of course with this and this you're good to go. Oh yeah, Tanu Chief can join, you can join. This is where we can start doing some plans. Let's start. Putting older troops on here. This was the orange guy, wasn't it? So if I... I can't actually check. Let him move into position. You are going to need air on this. You can't ignore it. You'll just, you'll just get bombed to death. Once all these are in position, we'll focus on the next step. I should be moving these guys to the next position. Uh, next step, make our defensive line, fly everyone to it. Just a straight arrow to Berlin, you don't really care about these troops. If you're desperate you can get the troops from the uh, Tanu Teva and so on, but uh, hey ho. And then this fellow here. And then these guys, one final front line. And plan that to go on the offensive. Okay. That supply dump's almost ready, and this should allow us to do the next step. So we'll take our panzer troops, which there are plenty of, shift them down into the best supply line there is, which is this bright blue one, because of that healthy dollop of supply. Make this guy a winter expert. Oh god, I forgot, I just took that defensive line up there. Bruh. Run over here. Take our air down. I'll put all the air over here. Because our tanks are going to do some smart stuff here. He says if they're good enough. They're probably not good enough, but you never know. So, can you still do a panzer push? Well, let's find out. Let's take a look at our supply lines. Pretty okay, not that bad. Let's go. That didn't work. Come on now. Start pumping out all our bonuses, breakthrough bonuses, all that jazz. How's our tanks? Are, are our tanks running out? No, our tanks still have fuel. Of course, our tanks aren't very good, but um, hey ho. Now we are trying to break across rivers. No breakthrough. Let's try again. Give me more land lease. I've got to pull my guys off. 
I've got to stop my air. Because I'm starting to run out. Go for political commissars. Operation bag ration. So operation so this is the next step to make things OP. Operation bag ration will give you massive breakthrough modifiers, attack modifiers, and if you achieve objectives, you get bonuses. Um, so if you stack this with the other bonuses, you can really do some disgusting damage. Let's find out. Let's demonstrate. Ba, 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 ba. Let's do a mass offensive. My 12 tank divisions are just going to chill. We can add another tank to the list. We can add a load more tanks to the list. Let's do resources, why not? Oh crap, I wasn't paying attention. And there we are, my tanks are only pushing through. So the answer is you can still do tank breakthroughs, but very carefully, well, very slowly. You've just got to break through the infantry first. Oh, la la la. Let's find the enemy supply lines. It is. Over at this objective, so let's go that way. Let's close this pocket. Take a look at our supply, make sure we're not losing too many, which we are. Let's stop counting that. No, we're pretty good on guns and everything like that. We're pretty good. So our first encirclement, yes you can encircle with tanks, it's just that you've got to be much more limited, you're not going to get the wider fronts and you're going to have to make sure everything is supplied ahead of time. People are overreacting right now because they're not really understanding supply lines, but in time this will uh, reveal itself to people. Let's move up our resources elsewhere. We're attacking over Christmas because it's winter and we get more bonuses compared to the, uh, the Germans in winter. Oh, I thought I overrun that then. Okay, where's the next supply hub? So let's fight over supply hubs. Next supply hub is Minsk, so if I take the Panzers and push for Minsk. Minsk. Let's bring these guys back up this way. Let's move up all the supplies back over here. How's the equipment? Not bad, it could be worse. Potentially, uh, let's reduce our production on Panzers. 50 is enough. Let's start putting the rest on. Guns. Okay, there's our Panzers. Let's counter push before the end of winter. So I need to take a lot of stuff. I don't think I'm going to take it by then.
That's a lot of pans I put there, so they may end up starving, but you know how it is. Okay, it's January 1943. Still pretty cold, so I think it'll be alright. They can probably pierce my armor. No, they can't. Wow. Let's start holding our offensives to resupply. Those thoughts have proven a bit of a counterproductive thing for me. And then we've probably overextended our push, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I've overextended our push. Couldn't take Minsk, but uh, it's not the end of the world, so we'll just withdraw the tanks back. Withdraw the tanks back. And instead, aim to do some cheeky stuff elsewhere. So let's take a look at our rail networks, take a look at our supply. Not bad, actually, not bad at all. Some mild issues on here, so let us upgrade. One, two, two. Level three is the roundabout go to, I'd say. And then we're good. Bring the armor back down south. Start retreating the troops from the pocket. Retreat from the pocket, you plebs. Uh, and then let's do smirch. This is why front lines can be such a pain in the ass. Go on, take it. There we are. Now you can expand out. All right, where's our tanks? Tanks move over here. We've got another objective to do. Uh, these 11 tanks are fine. So where's the enemy supply point? It's there. And there. So if we can cut this off. 
we're, uh, we're good. Let's start bullying the, uh, the Romanians, the weak link. See if we can go for this fuel source or this supply source. Well, oh, is that a cheeky counter attack? It is because of our supply, which is bad here. So we need to upgrade this supply dump, which we're in the process of doing. At this stage, yeah, it's pretty clear we're about to win, but uh, we'll finish this off with a bit of a, another offensive. So we can do the Bucharest Offensive or Operation Bag Ration again to give us even more bonuses for this objective. Which we're so close to taking if we were just a little bit braver. So let's retreat our tanks, move them back over here and try again. Let's keep check, keeping an eye on the supply, so our big supply problem is still from this sector. And still from this sector, so keep this upgraded, make sure it is getting upgraded. Oh, it looks like they're going to try something fancy on me, that's interesting. So Operation Bag Ration is this one here. If I put all my tanks there, split them into two, and then try and punch through from this sector to try and get round Minsk, potentially would we'll be alright. Almost everyone here? Mm, you guys still trying to attack? Yes, you are. That's why you're wasting it. Okay. So, Operation Bag Ration in March. Let's get these guys out, shift them on down here. Because our supply is so good, I, like I say, three is the golden number, especially with light tanks. Um, let's first stack our offensive actions, which we've already done. Potentially actually start stacking um, offensive actions here. Let's do our preferred tactic, Relentless Assault. And I'll upgrade this to Bold Attack. And then let's upgrade our next things. So, once more, Operation Bad Aggression. Offensives begin across the entire front. Very, very Soviet, as you can tell. Old Air comes up.
the very Soviet strategy. The question, I don't think, once you perfect this, I don't think a lot of players will be able to beat this. Once, once you get to this sort of stage, it's, the bonuses are so endemic. I'm punching through to Minsk. I want all my tanks punching through to Minsk. Another encirclement at Kiev. Only one guy, but you know how it is. Ah, it's the mud. It's the mud of this weather that's uh, slowing me down. Probably shouldn't have done it at this time, if I'm honest, but uh, hey ho. They're pushing back up, but we've managed to get a small encirclement of Hungarian troops, and we are breaking through ever so slowly in this sector. You can of course, oh, you can't actually stack offensives, I was going to say. I was going to say, can I just stack offensive now, because that would be ridiculously overpowered. Minsk is the target. Let's track out war bonds. They're doing their best to defend it, but uh, I don't think they're going to manage it. Am I running out of time for this offensive? No, I've got 18 days. That's fine. And Minsk is ours. Which means their supplies will start collapsing and my supplies will be pretty healthy. Let's make sure this is at the forefront of our supply. And we can halt for a bit. Uh, go to and circle. Crush this one mountaineer, guys. Come on. Let's do Smirsh or Barrier Troops for Army Organization Regain and finish off with another Coup de Gras. Equipment wise, we can still go for a while in, in terms of our constant offensives. And then the Allies are starting to invade, but at this stage it's pretty clear what's going to happen. But you can see it's more of an infantry war no, now, it's not a tank war. Tanks are no longer the, uh, the queens of battle, it's the infantry that dominate. And equally, if you want god-tier tanks, you're going to have to accept um, that you're only going to have like three of them. And so it's going to be a toss-up. Like, I didn't even bother researching any of this of how expensive it would be. Look at my tank design. The cheapest tanks I could field. I need to try to keep below 20 so I could get as many out as possible. We can sell some of our rubber. And let's sell some of our aluminium as well. And there we have it. The final push. Um, where are we pushing to? Oh, right, yeah, I was going to go from the circlement down this sector. In the open. Head down to Konigsberg. 
Did I achieve my objective? I think I did. Let's do half and half. Should we go for an encirclement in this sector? I don't think it's going to work, but we'll give it a go. All right, we've got to start holding our offensives now. We had a good run, but it's not not working anymore. Ground support. There we are. Let's push these go guys, go guys off this line. There we are. And we'll have to stop to rebuild a lot of our supply lines after this rather effective counter push. Plans of expert. Try again on these guys, but I doubt we'll break it. Even more org. Am I running out of oh god I am. That's not good. I'm running low on that and artillery, so immediately track more out for this. In fact more out for this. Let's get of these bombers, they were never very good in the first place. Let's reduce this down. And you know what, that should be fine. Love spending stuff on things that won't don't work. I don't need this. Uh, let's go down. Oh yes. Let's get that Grand Patriarch. So Grand Patriarch is good for stability. And then we can finish this off with a bit of Stannis Cold Personality. So we've had a little breakthrough, but now we're going to start plummeting in terms of supply. They're going to do a counter-offensive, but it's not going to do anything because our, we're so buffed now that it's not workable. I'm going to retreat the tanks back once more to the nearest supply hub. And we're just going to wait until we fix a lot of the problems we're having with our supplies. So the red areas are here, so once again, repair. Prepare. That's free, that's free, that's free, and that goes to Moscow. Next infantry, next supply issue. No more supply issues there. Mm, there's a bottleneck on this sector, so let's upgrade you a bit more. Now I can wait. Okay, D-Day is taking place, so we've pretty much achieved everything we need to achieve. Um, everything is collapsing and for the Allies. The Americans are coming, uh, the British are coming, so the, the Axis are more or less on their last legs. So the lesson here is I do recommend air production. I do, I cannot stress it enough as the, uh, as the Soviets now. And don't start producing tank productions really until, uh, until towards the end of 42. Also, Expect a land lease from the Americans in multiplayer, which will make things a lot easier for you. Um, and really, once you get to 1942, you can stack so many bonuses you win, it's just surviving until that time. That's a lovely little encirclement position, so I'm going to move my panzers down here. But it's all marshland, so actually I probably don't want to push there. Instead, I'm going to take a look at their supply lines and see where I should be pushing. This objective and this objective, or the rail line I should be pushing for. 
So I feel that if I punch through here and go for this rail line, I'll starve most of that sector and then I'll keep on going. We're low on a lot of guns now, and a lot of artillery, so we've got to be a bit careful with our production. So we'll just do some minor panzer pushes. Um, the air can now follow the panzers. I reckon I'll be running out of fuel soon, so probably shouldn't be doing that. Okay. Let's start spamming mills because we're pretty much coming towards the end of our time. There we are. Faithful servant of Lenin, why not? Who's pinging me with stuff? Ah! Ah, okay. There we are. Ah, the fuel's running out. Ugh, and now it's back because we took that position. So because fuel's, fuel is mostly around um, cities and that, supply hubs, you're often going to have to push the flank to get as many tiles and then counter push. There we are. This is done, this is done, and now keep pushing. And if I'm honest, I can just do a, a general offensive again, because they're all worried about D-Day and not about me, so... Once again, general offensive. Let's go for the Saman defensive, and let's go for... Death to the Invaders. Oh no, that's Partisani. It looks like I can't do this anymore because I've pushed them out, which is unfortunate. So it looks like after you push them back, then uh, you can't do anymore, which is a shame. Yeah, tiny invasion, nothing to... Uh, Tiny encirclement, nothing to be too proud of. That's what most encirclements are going to be now, this tiny encirclement. Unless you're feeling bold towards the end of the game. We're low on artillery, so we're going to start moving the artillery out. Let's remove the artillery from these divisions, save it, and there we are. And while we're waiting, let's crack some more out for these guys as well. Woods are not the best for... Uh, Tanks. Really, tanks have suffered a lot from terrain penalties now. Tanks will no longer be the gods of every terrain, crossing rivers with impunity and all that sort of stuff.
Uh, it's pretty much collapsing for the uh, Soviets now, or for the Germans now. If I'm honest, I can probably gun it. Along this coastline. I keep on forgetting to upgrade this. I wish the game would like shout at me. Can I do victories at hand? Yes, I can. To break through as well. And that's become unstoppable. When's the next offensive? Do the Warsaw offensive next. Start sweeping the armor down south. The Warsaw. Creeping along. And we're just going to starve them out as pretty much they all as pretty much collapses. Maybe I can get a big pocket. Are we feeling brave? Yeah, let's feel a bit brave. Although we are running out of equipment again, so we may have to halt for a while. But why not? Let's keep breaking. They're so close to breaking point. Why Why should we halt? Let's keep pushing. There we are. Almost there. Let's uh, reduce this now because we don't really need these. I'd rather be repairing infrastructure while we keep on the offensives. So you can see that um, Leningrad Road of Life. Just I didn't need to like that to stay for me the entire war. Where's their supply hub? They don't have a supply hub. Oh, well, they do, but I just don't see it. It's, it's, I think it's a like crack out. Offensive. Offensive doctrine. I want this line broken through. Now I don't have to like aim to insert, I just aim for their supplies. And finally that pocket has been collapsed. Uh, um, see if you can go into this for me. How many do we circle there? 16 divisions and one artillery piece. That's great news. Let's collapse it. And these troops are pretty much going to get encircled as well soon. Equally, that D-Day's occurred. It's a matter of time at this stage. Let's go for the Vistula Offensive. Just constantly getting bonuses from this. Let's bring up the artillery. Actually, let's not. Let's bring up the tanks to the north now. And now the reason why I can actually keep on waging this war is simply because the supply lines are so intact and I've got so many bonuses that... Uh, I'm overrunning the enemy before they can, before I run, well, before I starve really. And if I do have any problems, I halt the offensive and I we continue. But you can see that really, for the most part, I'm not having any issues because I'm taking supply systems that what was already built up, which is the big bonus about being the Soviet Union, is that you when you do counterattack, you don't have to do a lot of building of infrastructure because you already have it.
And there we are. Almost at Germany by 1943. And we've got it. Germany at this stage is in a state of collapse. It's not in the slightest any heart difficulty. And because of the order 227 with that plus 25% in core territory, I was never going to get pushed. Ever. That is a very powerful buff if you can survive from 1942. And that means you can start switching production to other things. Rather than constantly spouting out infantry. So with that tank build against... Let's actually take a look at this tank build. So I've got 247 breakthrough, 50 soft attack. That's not very good. However, it's got armour and uh, it can't be pierced. So if we take a look at this German infantry division. Uh, let's take a say, let's take a look at this one. I'll divide up by four. Actually, if I just tag switch. Tag Germany. Uh, let's see. So I've only got one infantry division. Okay. They've got three artillery and three, six, nine infantry squads. So that's a soft attack of 289 and a piercing of 19. So that's not going to pierce me even with this and that. Now, if I go back to tag Soviets. My tank design was garbage. It was hot garbage, but I could produce tons of it because it was garbage. And that's the benefit. A lot of people are overbuilding their units now. They're Oh, hi, Dom. No, no ways. Uh, I'm just about to finish off anyway. Uh, hopefully, if I win this war by, you know, in the next hour. A lot of people are seeing those high values and going, I need 20 armor, I need 20 engines. You don't. The reliability is so bad once you get to that stage, it's not worth having. And your production is so expensive. I would say anything above 20 production is probably too expensive to be producing. Whether it's light tanks, whether it's medium, whether it's heavy, if the production cost is above that and you want, say, 10 to 20 divisions, then you're having a bad time. You're not going to manage this. Maybe if Germany is, maybe if you're putting like tons of mills into, in, into, into tanks, you can probably pull it off. But for the so Soviet Union, uh, you're not going to have enough time to do that. Or, and um, for other nations, you're not going to have enough time to do that. Um, so I would highly recommend specialising either cheap anti-tank, cheap soft attack, or cheap uh, or cheap main battle tanks. Don't try and do everything. As you can see, I just focused on the army, the soft attack, and the breakthrough. And it allowed me to, once I get over here, to have an okay division with good armour, that cop, and, and good piercing. It's not going to kill anything quickly, but it is going to win battles, and it is going to break through and, and secure. Uh, and it will hold its own against most other forces. And if I was going against a player and if things didn't work, I would be using anti-tank or things to that effect. Or light anti-tank or things to that effect. I should have done the Bucharest offensive, but that's too late now. I'm in Berlin. At this stage, I'm just going to have my tank spread out. And we'll carry on from there. Oh, uh, new glory to the Red Army now, why not? Why not? Eventually, yeah, I should have put more. But you don't need to, like, mass offensive at this, at this, at this, at this stage. You don't really need to worry about the equipment anymore. Uh, let's put more in our... There we are. You can see it starts collapsing in. But it'll be very important now that you do have a competent allies. So you're going to be working very close together with the US now in terms of getting your land lease for your air, in terms of um, organising D-Days, in terms of getting tanks. It's now no longer a case that the Soviet Union can just solo everything. It's going to need support from the Allies, and that's quite historical, and that's quite interesting because it's going to be it's going to cause a lot more team-based gameplay. However, the dynamic is pretty simple: um, you're defensive until 42, and then you're offensive afterwards, and you can start switching and attacking and going on from there. And if you take a look at casualties, 2.3 million, 7.82 million, it's, uh, self-explanatory. Yep. 
the Allies have got supply problems, I do not, because I think I still have Road of Life, and I'm repairing all my infrastructure. But I cannot stress enough the importance of having that air. Because you'll just get logistic bombed to death if you don't. Like it's not, it's, you know, it's not like maybe have air, it's you're going to need air or you are going to get logistic bombed unless people ban logistic bombing, which is unlikely. I have no idea where this tank is going. It's just zigzagging. Oh no, they decrypted us. Um, can I do another? Let's do the rush for Berlin. Let's do offensive. Let's do a general offensive. But let's look at the bonuses. Plus 10% attack, plus 10% breakthrough. Um, it, it, plus 25 defense. Nothing can hurt you. Like, you're... Um, your infantry cannot be hurt once you get to 1942. You just have to survive that long. Yeah, why not? So let's take a look at the statistics for these tanks. Win ratio of 89%, slow win ratio, but win ratio nonetheless. I could perhaps have improved it with putting some SBA and SBGs in there um, and so on. However, I didn't think it was really that necessary. Uh, and there's Germany gone. So, what are the rules? So, what have we learned from this? Okay, you know how the supply system works now, I've shown you. You know uh, what the Soviet sort of priorities are, um, how they can survive till 1942, the importance of air, especially to prevent logistics bombing, which will occur multiplayer games, and the necessity to prevent potential cheese with transport planes. You've seen a way to bolster your defences uh, with perks and, uh, and uh, political decisions, and you have seen the sort of designs you will need for your tanks. Altogether, the Soviet Union has become a very interesting, very interesting campaign which will last until 1942 to 1943 against a good Soviet player and, well, a half decent Soviet player. Uh, and it will be a very interesting uh, game, game, gameplay style. No longer you're going to see sing, like, the Soviets carry by themselves. They will need support from the Allies via land lease and they will, and they, they will need to be that pressure on the West. Uh, damage even to damage or slow down the Germans. Oh, together you've got different sort of meta techniques like making mills as France uh, or converting everything to mills as France, um, rushing fighter twos, all that sort of thing. But the lesson will be the same um, because you won't really be able to trade for fighter twos um, because you can't afford to. Uh, it's primarily air, 300 divisions. Um, and then by the end of 1942, switch to tanks, and then you're good to go. Uh, upgrade where you need to, and then you are fine. And really, if they do push past the standard line, it's not the end of the world because your defensive bonuses and the extra logistics damage will slow and slow them down and wear them down. And then the bonuses you get by 1943 uh, will allow you to counterattack either by these attacks on all fronts or beginning to use that armor. And a lot of people said that, you know, tanks are dead. Uh, well, big tank pushers are dead by 19, um, initially, and then they're going to become more and more important as the game goes on. Uh, and as long as you su supply your, uh, support your supply lines, you're good to go. Uh, unfortunately, x I'm just about to be finished, but uh, you can always watch the VOD, but we've just been trying to try out a meta for multiplayer uh, and to show players the potential pitfalls for the Soviet Union and the bonuses you can get. Um, Primarily, it's a very interesting playstyle now, and uh, it requires a transition in uh, military production halfway through the war. Uh, no longer are you going to be spamming tanks at the start of the war as the Soviet Union. Now you're going to be having to focus on air, infantry, and then towards the end of the war, armor and um, 
armor and uh, infrastructure to really try and enable those encirclements. In any case, we're done. We've won our war. Um, it's ogre uh, and altogether, uh, altogether not too bad. An easy win. Uh, that's not going to work anymore, I don't think, in the No Step Back X bomber. No Step Back, the supply is so demanding in regions that your medium tanks aren't going to be able to break through by themselves. Uh, your low infantry will just get counterattacked or they won't be able to break through. Um, your really just tank spam is dead. Like tank spam, tank spam is not going to work. It's not going to work. Um, you don't have enough infantry to support your flanks. You can't do these massive encirclements anymore because you're not going to get supply to these tanks. Um, and all they're really going to be used initially is to punch through to supply hubs. Um, artillery is still pretty important now, but it's going to be air, uh, air and infantry spam as the Soviets, and then eventually you're going to move to tanks. Uh, you, you do not have the industry to make tanks uh, as the Soviet Union in this, in this DLC. So it's not going to work. Um, you could, even when I was massing uh, civilian industry, I could not match the German industry. Um, you might be able to if you're getting boosted by the uh, by the Americans, but again, it's unlikely. Um, so it is uh, it's a much harder game for the Soviets, and uh, the old rules no longer apply. However, uh, I suppose we'll find out in later. I'll hopefully try and get into a multiplayer game later on in the week and give it a go. But in any case, that's it for today. So thank you all for watching, ladies and gentlemen, uh, and I hope you all have a jolly good time. Adieu.